Hey folks, it's James, and I was documenting progress on one of our job sites the other day, watching the GC hammer away at the ledge and the rock on the site so they could place the foundation forms correctly. And it occurred to me when it comes to real world workflows, no workflow could be as real, nor could the stakes be any higher than the need to clearly communicate dimensions on our drawings. So maybe you saw the video where I sketched this modern house in Morfolio Trace, trying to make something modern and affordable at the same time. I know, fat chance of that, right? But here's where Morfolio's scaling and selection features can really help you take a simple sketch like this and develop it into a more thoughtful and dimension plan so you can then export that plan as a JPEG into either SketchUp or Rhino and build in three dimensions. The first thing I'm gonna do is go into the settings on the home screen and go to stack layers and undo stack layers. And I'll show you why. That's because when I zoom in like this and I add a new layer, I want that layer only to cover that area I'm interested, the area of the screen. Now when I add a layer and export it later, it will have the highest resolution possible for a sheet that size. Now the next step is to give this very loosely dimensioned freehand plan uh, a more precise scale. So I'm going to use the scale feature and lift those two crosshairs into place. And then I'm going to add by just tapping that box, add the actual known dimension. Of course, I did set an overall dimension, so I can get that going. Now I can activate the scale, so all subsequent development of this plan will be to scale, and that's my whole goal. Now I can add a new layer at the top of the stack, and I'll tap on the three dots so I can control the opacity, and I'll dial back the opacity just of the paper, not of the actual drawing, but of the paper. Then I'll go in and select one of my favorite pencils, because the first thing I'm gonna do is lay out an overall grid here, or some overall dimensions, because I'm, I'm still not ready to commit to the precise placement of these walls, and I wanna maximize my flexibility as far as I can into the process. Now notice I'm using the four finger tap to make the entire interface go away. And then I'm using a double tap to make the scale rotate. So these are some gestures that I've gotten used to over the, over the years, and they really speed things up. Now with the scale activated, all of your lines are gonna be straight. So I'm gonna start by laying out the vertical lines, the so-called north-south grid lines. And then you'll see me double tapping the scale again to make it vertical, and I'll lay out the horizontal lines, the so-called east-west grid lines. And after those are in the basic structural lines, you might say I'll start to locate some of the major items. I, like I know where the kitchen's gonna be, I know how big I need the island to be, I know where the stairs are gonna be, and and I know roughly how the bathrooms are going to lay out, but this is all still being made up as I go. So uh, I know it looks like I'm working really fast here, but I am just trying to locate major elements. And really what it comes down to is you want to keep reducing your choices. You're not committing to the final thing, but you want to narrow in on the final solution, sort of like a boulder in Indiana Jones rolling towards Indiana. And you're not trying to escape anything, but you're trying to limit your options so that your design can kind of organically grow out of your progress. Okay, so the parameters of structure, how I'm gonna break this up into structural bays, and the most important things, the stairs and the kitchen, are all set. And it is time now to go to the next stage of development. I'm still gonna be in freehand, but I'm just gonna draw more carefully, and I'm gonna draw over that grid on a new layer. So I'm already limiting my options, but I'm going to now try and try and materialize, try and realize that very loose freehand sketch now in terms of this new added layer of order. So I'll start by not drawing surprisingly, but I'm gonna lay out now those dimensions that I just set. And I'll use the scale again to just sort of creep along and set these dimensions. So it's already getting more precise in the sense that I can begin to show this to a contractor for takeoffs and estimate areas. But again, this is a, a way of just sort of procrastinating before I get down to the hard work of actually designing. And here we go. I'm going to start with the bedrooms. So I'm going to start with the smallest spaces because if I can make those work, 
I think I can make everything else work. And notice that they are insanely small. And this is a, a pet interest of mine. When you look back at mid-century modern houses in California, experimental housing, very often the bedrooms are tiny. And this is a second home. And it is trying to be an affordable home. So I'm going to try and make those bedrooms as small as possible. As I'm drawing, there are often times when I'll use the selection tool and kind of grab a whole piece of the plan and, and move it around a little bit. And that's very helpful. Um, here I am uh, trying to figure out which way the bathroom should go. It, it, should it be here? Or should it make more room for a master closet? But of course, there's a trade-off. When I move that over, I definitely impact the stairs. So now I'm going to try and lay out and see if the stairs still work. And truth be told, uh, for all you um, beginning designers out there, stairs are probably one, one of the most critical things. And I really should have begun with the stairs and at least known exactly the size that would work and then fit everything around them. I could still select them and move them around. So they're in place now. I guess it's working, but I'm going to move on to the larger parts of the house now. I'm going to lay out this two-sided fireplace, which I just love two-sided fireplaces. And again, I think it's going to make the, the home seem more kind of magical. The fact that you can see that fire from both the dining room and the living room. And again, as you'll see soon, when we take some areas. This is a very small home, so I'm trying to pack a lot into this. And here's some more details about the kitchen and making sure that works. And really, it's it's all about testing your assumptions. So it's a little nerve wracking, and um, but you just got to keep going because you know you can always massage things later. So I'll put in some what I call placeholder furnishings in the living room. These are about five feet each with a coffee table, about 30, 36 inches deep, coffee table in the middle, and some random piece of furniture. I don't have specific pieces of furniture in mind, but I just want to begin placing things and seeing what the options are. And notice how large this area is from that sideboard that I just drew and these sofas. I think we're going to come back and revisit that. Now I'm just adding a little bit of classic architectural hatchwork to uh, make the plan more presentable. I'm not sure, maybe just to myself. It's really just a stalling tactic. Anytime you're adding hatching, it's not necessary. And let's, let's put in those beds now. So this you can see that influence, that early modern housing influence where people really had tiny bedrooms. So I'm using just a twin bed. And, you know, is it a sacrifice? Yes, but that's the whole idea be behind a, the smallest possible house design. Somebody's got to make a sacrifice at some point, so it may as well be your kids who are very lucky to have you as parents or your guests. And I don't think anyone's really going to complain, but you'll see here, I'm, even I started having second thoughts on maybe, maybe these rooms have to at least accommodate a queen-size bed. So you see me laying out the five foot wide by the eight foot or the seven foot deep. And now I'll put the uh, queen bed in barely, barely any clearance around the sides. But again, you got to give up something. If this is going to be even close to affordable, I've got to really uh, cut down on the space here. So I'll speed the video up again. And remember, just tap the space bar at any time to slow things down. And I'll just try and finish off the whole design in this first iteration. So I'll have the beds in. All the critical clearances have been tested. I know I'm not passing grade on the small bedrooms, but we'll try and address that later. And now I'm going to start rearranging. I'm going to use the power of Morfolio and that selection tool to help me actually design. So I think I'll come in here it strikes me that there's way too much room over here in the living room. So if I select all of the house up to that point where all that space occurs and then slide it all over, now I can just look at the space between the living room sideboard and the living room sofas and I can figure out what, what, what is that minimum? How, how do I then use the extra space back on the bedroom side? I'm adding about two foot as it turns out. And I'm still not got the whole thing. So I think I'm going to go another two feet. And there's nothing wrong with that living room in, in my estimation now, especially with the attached screen porch. So I'll just kind of jog that into place. I'll set it so I've gained, I've lost about four feet or maybe three feet in the living room. 
but I've gained three feet everywhere else. So I can make those tight spaces work much better at this point. And now it's time to confront the reality of what I've done. So I'm going to go back and remeasure with the scale and just write down what I'm left with. Okay, so if it's tight, if it's way too tight, I want to know that ahead of time. But I'm, I'm going to stick with it. Eight foot six, I think I could uh, convince a uh, early modern kid to sleep in that room. And I've got a whole lot more room for the single bathroom. Remember, this is, uh, this is kind of roughing it. Mies van der Rohe style. So there's only one bathroom for this family with uh, two adults and two children or two guests. Um, but I'm going to stick with it. And uh, the whole key here being affordability. So and those beds didn't really work when you walked in and hit the side. Let me see if I can get them to work here. I'll rework the closets a little bit. And each time I'm doing this, each time I'm I'm iterating through this, you can see it's getting um, a little more precise, even though it's still freehand. And I just I just love this freedom that freehand gives you because um, you almost feel like you're walking through the house uh, using freehand and the selection tool, micro adjusting things as you go. And this is such an advantage over drawing with a pencil on paper and Morfolio makes all of this so easy. So I'll throw in some hand lettered things so I remember what things are. And I can always show that to the client at this point too. But here again, another superpower of Morfolio. I'm going to summon up the area tool and stretch that rectangle over the house and see where I stand. So I'm at about a little under 1400, way under 1500 square feet, a little under 1400 square feet. That's not bad. But you, you notice that I included the porch the first time. So I, I really want to, I want to kind of psych myself up and realize what is the smallest that I've made this. So now I'm going to use the uh, add function here and add another chunk of area. So I'll, I'll, oops, sorry about that. So I will now drag that uh, rectangle back over the uh, main part of the house. Remember, I'm going to use that plus button. I'll come back over that, make sure that's engaged, select the rectangle mode, and I'll stretch all over that. And then because I'm in add, I can now add that master bedroom too. And now when I tap it, it looks like we're at, that's a little confusing. I see, I got to add up both of those. So 978 plus 163, um, I'm getting uh, pretty far under, I'm still below uh, 1200 feet, I believe at this point, just over 1200 square feet. So that's going to help an awful lot with the budget. Last thing I'll do, usually I'm, I'm about to go to SketchUp. So I'm going to um, make sure I've got everything right. Give my last best effort uh, to take the dimensions off of the scale function and correct anything that I've uh, left there in its original form and mark out my interior walls. And all of this is going to make the layout in SketchUp so much easier. I'm going to be bringing this in as a JPEG plan into SketchUp momentarily. And I love to build things with guidelines. So when I mark out my walls, uh, it's going to make it so much easier to set up the whole SketchUp model. And I'm just adding a little, a few little sexy touches like the clothes and the closet, all those things we learned all those years ago from the Frank Ching books. Um, but I can now show this again. I can share this out to the client, show them some progress. I've completely forgotten to add the front entry. And this is going to uh, definitely have some compromise to it. But remember, I can refer back to that sketch I made. And I had a porch overhang and front stairs in that sketch. So I'll figure out where that front door goes. And then that will affect the sort of entry sequence. Again, very tight, uh, early modern California house. I hope people see it that way. And once again, I'm using that selection tool just to make those bedrooms a little bit bigger. I make the first bedroom wall, I move it over, then I move both bedroom walls over and polish up the bathroom. So all these things right down to the wire, just like real life, right down to the deadline. And some of your best decisions are going to be made right down to the deadline. Now I'll do that four finger tap and we'll see the whole thing and bring the context back now, bring the interface back. Let's uh, make some last minute adjustments. 
And there was our plan, and it is time to export this plan as a JPEG to SketchUp. So I'll hit the export button, and in Morpholio, all these pages, every layer basically comes up as a page. And um, I often find it's easier just to do a screenshot. So I'll go ahead and do my four finger tap, and I'll pose that plan right where I need it, and then I'll tap the iPad buttons just the way you do it to get that screenshot going and off it goes down to the corner and i'm going to save it now to my icloud drive so i can grab that easily i know where it is i'll pick it up in sketchup and import it drag the corner of the house over to the origin and i am on my way building this in 3d the true test of whether or not this design really will fly to learn more about the tips and techniques you saw in this video check out all the links in the description below and to see the next video in this real world workflow series click right here and i will see you in the next video